Well, hello and welcome to the Shadow Proclamation. My name's Paul and I'm joined by... Thomas. And we are... We're already seven episodes deep into the War Games. We're about to get into episode eight. Uh, and I've just remembered oh. to be some big bangs. There it is. <laughs> oh. oh, my eyes and my ears. Uh, Agony. As, as always, give the channel a like and a subscribe. Oh, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Check your comments down below. Let us know what you think of this. No, I still think this was a rather abrupt ending. It was. Like, these guys could have definitely put up a better fight. These guys now just... Now that... That didn't happen in the last episode, did it? No, it didn't. They weren't firing their guns at them. They got better for their second att attempt. Yeah, a bit better directed on the... On the reprise. Oh, they've taken a doctor. Because in the first one, the first time in the end of the last episode, they didn't really put up any resistance at all, ironically. Yeah. It's been a great story so far. It's definitely, yeah, it's held held our attention, which is not easy. <laughs> it's not easy to hold our attention. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really, mate? Yeah, no. What I meant was, not easy given the length of the story, but... Oh, brutal. He just stuck it out without even looking, really. You may have changed your appearance, but I know who you are. Mm. He knows. Oh, do you? Your machine is a TARDIS. You're too familiar with its controls to be a stranger. I had every right to leave. Stealing a TARDIS. Oh, I'm not criticizing you. We are two of a kind. We most certainly are not. We were both Time Lords. We both decided to leave our race. I had reasons of my own. Just as I had. Your reasons are only too obvious. Power. Here's the back story. Mm. How much have you learnt of our plan? So the first time we've got the I know that you've been of, uh, kidnapping soldiers stolen. from the Earth from yeah. various times in its history and bringing them here to kill one another. But do you realise our ultimate objectives? No objective can justify such slaughter. The war games on this planet are simply the means to an end. The aliens intend to conquer the entire galaxy. A thousand inhabited worlds. But why choose the people of the Earth? They are the most suitable recruits for our armies. Man is the most vicious species of all. That's well, that simply isn't true. Mm -hmm. Consider their history. For a half a million years, they have been systematically killing each other. Now we can turn this savagery to some purpose. We can bring peace to the galaxy. And you can help. You see, I'm not the cold-hearted villain you suppose me to be. Hmm. My motives are purely peaceful. My men surround these place. <laughs> you might women someone... should never think. For such a little woman, your mouth is too big. Oh. <laughs> Dear. And <laughs> so he's just like, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Got rather primitive ideas about women knowing their place. Does he now? Oh, sounds a nice job. <laughs> no laughing matter. And we are going to bring a new order to the galaxy. One united galactic empire. An empire of slaves. With you as one of its rulers. Doctor. It's a bit it's Star Warsy, awesome. isn't it? I was going to say, it's very Star Wars. Our new empire. I can convince the warlord that you Your new us. empire? Anakin, our allegiance is to the Republic, to democracy. I am interrogating. I am the Senate. <laughs> I am the I Senate. Do it. From the time <laughs> so was that the first mention ever of the Doctor being a fugitive from the Time Lords? Yes, I think so. We cannot trust him. If he helps us destroy the Resistance, if his life will be spared. Oh, great bit of acting. Mm. If. Oh, he's in a bit of a pickle now, isn't he? To help you. But you will. Mm. You have no alternative. And help people like that to conquer the galaxy? Not people like that. People like us. I intend to take over as supreme galactic ruler. You can help me to rule. If you will cooperate. I have a feeling these people playing these roles may not be 
genuinely the nationalities they're playing. <laughs> what makes you say that? <laughs> Just a feeling I get. <laughs> so the guy with the sideburns. It feels like he might be the master, but I'm not 100% sure. Right. Because, I mean, yeah, the sense that they've clearly got some kind of relationship and he's also sort of a fugitive in a sense. and Certainly uh, adding a whole new kind of dimensions to the show's lore, isn't it? It is. The canon. And did I imagine it, but they said, like, we were Time Lords or something. Um... A sense that I always think of Time Lord as a species, but they're almost using it as a title. I don't know if I imagined that or not. No, I think you did pick up on that correctly. And I mean, I think the Time Lords are... So yeah, I mean, further down the road, you do get a distinction between Time Lords and Gallifreyans. Right, interestingly. Interesting. Yeah. Whereas we kind of conflate that in the modern era, don't we? We're just like the Time Lords. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Next one's during the Crimean War Zone. But I suppose in the Capaldi era, he and he's on Gallifrey, you get people who are kind of almost like civilians, you know. Yes. Um, yeah, not all of them are Time Lords. Yeah. And the um, Chibnall era makes reference as well to a group on Gallifrey called the Shaboggans. Ah, right, yeah. Who are uh, something which crops up a little bit in the future, but we'll get yeah. there one day. Well, the, the, the Chibnall era does other stuff uh, to Gallifrey, doesn't it? <laughs> We're back to some very jaunty music here, but I'm back on the, back at this nice uh, farmhouse bet again as well. Lots of good location stuff. Well, that was a good big bang. Another that was nice. A party of picked men. Uh, there's, there's quite a lot to, to organize. Party of picked men. A Pikmin party. <laughs> there ain't no party like a Pikmin party. <laughs> uh, is that S Club 7? S Club, yeah. S Club. S Club 7. S Club. There ain't no party like an S Club party. R.I.P. Paul. I did a talk at youth group the other day and... Uh, in you go, then. It went all right, but I made a JLS reference and was oh. met with a lot of blank expressions. I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah, they were big when I was in year two. That's some so. niche, niche referencing right there. So the adults in the room laughed, but uh, yeah. <laughs> now listen, everyone, just follow me. We're going to take over the war room. Stand still! Don't move! You are completely surrounded! <laughs> Thank you, Doctor. A nice, neat little package for us to dispose of. Wow. He had to play the part, didn't he? Yeah, he's had to really land the minute all of a sudden, so... This is very good. This is very good stuff. It is, isn't it? It really is. I it mean, feels I think... very coherent, the show now, doesn't it? Well, especially yeah. after the Space Pirates. Well, I think, um, I mean, this story is obviously bringing in a whole load of new stuff, isn't it? So yeah. this introduction of, uh, you know, the Time Lords being referenced, the idea of the Doctor being, stealing the TARDIS and being a fugitive on the run, um, and the War Chief being sort of similar as well. That's, uh, yeah, it's really kind of forming into things that we we now assume is just part of the history of the show. Yeah. Yeah, because it's crazy to think, isn't it, that by this stage, the show's been on air for sort of six years. Yeah. But we've not had really, like, there's not been Time Lords, there's not been the idea of the Doctor stealing the TARDIS or anything like that. Um, that's all, uh, yeah, and that, but that's all being dripped in now, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, they they took their time. I mean, maybe they just thought in throughout the Hartnell era and most of the Troughton era, they just thought, yeah, we don't really need to get much into his backstory. We can do enough with just this is a mysterious guy traveling with people. But they've clearly decided 
actually, no, it would be interesting to flesh out, like give us something about where this guy's come from. Because we've had nothing really, have we? We had him talking to Victoria about how he kind of misses home a bit. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've just that- noticed something. Look, yeah. you see where it says more. Mm. Let's see how much it adds when I click more. <laughs> it literally <laughs> adds a comma there. <laughs> Look at that. That's brilliant. <laughs> That's amazing. You can either read it with in the 1917 zone, fighters prepare to attack central control, or more in the 1917 zone, fighters prepare to attack central control. <laughs> I mean, wow, BBC iPlayer, you've really pulled out all the stops on that one, haven't you? Absolutely. They're giving us just all that. That's the deep dive that you want when you click more. Um, yeah, a comma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it makes sorry. me think, though, it, it's interesting because um, people would say, you know, when you think about like the timeless child and that, people get their people are unhappy with some of the things that have been brought about there. Yes. Some people would some people would say, "Hey, the show's always changed like what it's about and things." Um like up to this point there was none of this stuff and now there is. Um yeah. That's a and that's a fair point, isn't it? I guess it's just is it good or not? <laughs> well, I mean that's true, but I mean I think I think the difference be it is though, like once at that at this once you've established something because at this point there there hasn't really been anything established about who the doctor is or really where he's come from yeah i mean there have been the odd thing but it's just sort of left in the air i think now the show begins to establish a bigger picture a sort of a sort of law if you want to call it that or a, that kind of idea of um i think once you establish those things you have to then run with them Yes, I think that's... You can't decide, you know, next week, you know, oh, he's not a Time Lord. (laughs) Or should I say, you can't decide 50 years later after having run with it for 50 years. (laughs) No, he's not a Time Lord. Um, So I think it's, in my mind, it's a different thing. I think the show obviously was evolving and developing, but I think it needs to evolve, not just dump stuff when it doesn't want to um i think you're absolutely right i think at this stage it's still writing the law um i think what becomes difficult is when you rewrite the law um mm. and that's not to say you can't do anything to some of these things but yeah there's there's some pretty fundamentals aren't there and if the doctor is no longer a time lord from gallifrey is it still doctor who well well maybe and, and i think the worst the worst argument for it is when people say it's a show about like someone who travels in time, blah, 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 blah. They can do anything you want. And you're like, okay, so next week the TARDIS is going to be a banana (laughs) and it's not going to be a police box ever again. It's just going to be a banana, um, a really big banana that they have to unpeel to get into each week. Um, I'm, 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 I'm solved, but no, I'm joking. (laughs) Yeah, that's a very, very good point. Yeah, Chibnall couldn't bring himself to change the TARDIS from a police box. So he holds was, that in higher regard in the law than the There Doctor are certain Doctor. things there that have become so established as part of the show that they're not just the throwaway line here or there about something that you can then overlook and go, okay, that was just one writer in the 60s when they didn't really have an established idea of what the show was going to be. Um there comes a point where you go, yeah, this has become what it is. And that I think that's what happens with the Time Lord thing and all that then from the, in the show from now on, um, which is why then later when we get into the Jim Delira, I just go, oh. Yeah, there's a, there's a, hu- uh, there's a hubris to it in saying... Uh, a, hu- oh, a hubris. A hubris. A doctor, a doctor hubris. <laughs> to say, for all these 50 years, when you thought the Doctor was one thing, you're actually wrong. Mm. It, we, we were all wrong. Uh, this is what was really going on. It's sort of like a conspiracy theorist, isn't it? It's mm. like, uh, the, the royal family are actually lizard people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, we, humans were created by uh, aliens that, uh, you know, engineered our evolution and stuff. Um, yeah. Uh, Elvis Presley is still alive. 
Uh, <laughs> He's just upstairs at Graceland. <laughs> That's why you're not allowed up there. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I know. I know this is fiction, anyway. But but yeah, no, it doesn't mean you can just do absolutely anything you want. Well, I think when I think for me, like what I I think a show ought to be as consistent within its own framework as it can be. Yeah. And once you once you just start saying, well, we can we can literally chuck anything out, even if it's been established for ages and ages. It, it that's the issue I have anyway with the timeless child. But we'll get to that, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But here, this is the this is the the sort of genesis of these ideas, isn't it? Um, and even yeah. though we are five, you know, five and a half, six years into the show, um, and you could argue hey the show has just changed completely what it's about um for me at least i don't think it's an issue at this point because there hasn't been anything really established yeah it's been left in the air and you you could there are the odd line here or there like i say but nothing that's been set in stone if they had made a big point of making out to be that you know the doctor was a particular particular species a particular race or whatever earlier on yeah. And then suddenly they turned on it now and completely turned the whole thing around. I could understand that, but it's been so open ended. Yeah. I don't have an issue with it at this stage. I think if I'd been watching it at the time, I would have found it a very compelling and interesting development to the show. I think the only the only kind of problem it would have raised for me, if I was imagining if this is all I had seen so far of Doctor Who, is uh how does susan fit into this You're like yeah that's kind of an enigma that <laughs> doctor who never addresses and it? it was like he had a granddaughter in the first in the first season yeah <laughs> but yeah but oh well yeah it's it works overall i think yeah it? yeah an yeah. interesting direction well, to take the show in yeah and there's discussions that like to be having about that i guess about where it all fits and People have debated different things over time and novels outside of the main universe of, of Doctor Who have kind of delved deeper into those ideas a little bit. But yeah, um, unless it happens on telly, as far as I'm concerned, it's not actually official. Right. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's I think that's helpful. You've got to you've got to draw a line somewhere, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Because the show, the show can't rely on um, stuff that hasn't. It can't rely on information. It will expect people to know information that's been written outside yeah. of it, uh, in a way. Um, yeah, you have to be able to just watch it as a show that's on the TV and be able to get, you know, be able to understand it. I think hermetically sealed. Mm. Um, yeah, but that doesn't well, mean that you can't. Yeah. Those, you know, if you are into the more kind of wider universe of it, there's a lots of things that you can happily slot in, yeah, from the wider universe, which will exist coexist harmoniously alongside it. Yeah, you and can have your sort of head canon, can't you? And sometimes yeah. fan stories or like the novels do make it into the show, don't they? Like, um, wasn't Human Nature and Family of Blood? Wasn't that based on a a novel? Yeah, and I think a lot of um the idea of Dalek was lifted from a book as well, or from a, an audio. Um, mm. So there's lots of things like that, particularly in the modern era, yeah, where they've taken ideas that grew up in the sort of, either in Big Finish or in the novels, sort of the Virgin New Adventures, sort of in the early 90s, things like that. But yeah, so the, yeah, human nature was part of the Virgin New Adventure. When I'm I say not. virgin, I mean the company, just not randomly just using the word virgin. Oh, right. Um, I was going to say. Because so, I think BBC lost, I don't think they lost the license necessarily, but there was some kind of thing where Virgin owned the a license to something. So oh, they, yeah. there was a series of novels with Sylvester McCoy's Doctor, um, which continued the kind of, continued the show um, after it went off air in the early, uh, you know, in, at the end of the 80s and these novels came out. Um and um but it, they were much more kind of adult i think a lot of them right oh gosh but, uh, rated doctor who yeah to some extent but you can and then you but you can choose you know there's a lot of that that you could happily let exist alongside the show and it wouldn't be an issue um but of course you you couldn't really just assume that it's there that everybody knows about it and you can 
work it into scripts, I suppose. But mm. yeah. Anyway, we digress a little bit there. No, but yeah, no, that's very interesting. Well, yeah, let us know what you think of this in uh, the comments and our Discord server. If you're not on that already, uh, do and check it out. It's very easy to join. You just uh, click the link in the description, and it will take you through creating a Discord account if you don't have one already, and it's completely free, and you'll get access to. Um, lots of rooms where we chat about Doctor Who in more detail and hoping to put some bonus content on there at some point thinking of making our first ever episode the um, unearthly child releasing our full reaction to that at some mm. point that might be a nice little tidbit um, <laughs> but yeah thanks for watching goodbye take care